Welcome back to the Chain Coding Challenge! Where each coder must continue what the other one started. In our last episode, Radu generated leaves on top of Frank's fractal Christmas tree. Now it's Frank's turn again. Let's see what happens. Hi coders! Welcome to part 3 of Chain Coding Challenge with Vanilla JavaScript and HTML Canvas, where I go back and forth with Radu, and in each episode we add a random feature on top of each other's code base. I'm really curious what's gonna come out of that. In the first episode, I built a fractal Christmas tree and I sent it over to Radu. Let's see what he did with it. Oh wow, he added leaves! Now the fractal tree looks like a proper Christmas tree! That's interesting, he used get image data to make sure leaves cover the branches. I've never thought of doing that before. So if I refresh the page, leaves should be randomized and redistributed along the branches. Yes. This makes it look more like a real tree, doesn't it? Also, I like how it's light on top and darker on the bottom. Interestingly, he doesn't do this with create linear gradient canvas method. He is adjusting amount of green based on vertical position of the pixel. Very cool. How about we make it into nice holiday scenery by adding snow on the ground and falling procedural snowflakes. I did make a video a long time ago where I show you how to create fractal snowflakes step by step. I will use that codebase to generate a set of randomized snowflakes and I will export it into Spritesheet. That Spritesheet will be available for you to download in the video description uh, down below. So if you want to code along with me, I will explain everything step by step as usual. Let me show you how to use draw image method to turn falling particles into snowflakes and how to use save, translate, rotate and restore to make them slowly rotate in a random direction as they fall. I will also show you how to draw curved lines on canvas so we can create a nice snowy hills background. Do you code during holidays or weekends or do you prefer to have a good work-life balance? Let me know in the comments. Click the like please. Let's start by bringing my sprite sheet into the project. Uh, you can download my snowflakes image in the video description. I create a constant variable I call snowflakes and I set it equal to new image. I set its source to snowflakes.png. Now I create a JavaScript class I call snowflake with capital S. This will create many similar particle objects to represent individual randomized snowflakes. Horizontal X coordinate will be a random number between 0 and canvas width. Canvas width is a global variable from line 1. Vertical Y coordinate will be between 0 and canvas height. Size will be a random number between 20 and 80 pixels. Falling speed will be a very small random number, for example between 0 0.2 and 0 0.7. I will use sprite sheet with 12 snowflakes. Frame X will be a random whole number between 0 and 3. This will determine if we draw snowflake from column 0, 1 or 2 or 3. Frame Y will also be a random integer between 0, 1, 2 or 3 to determine row within the sprite sheet. Integer simply set is a whole number without fractional component because there is no row 1.5 for example. That's why we wrap it in math.floor here to get whole numbers, integers. Frame X and frame Y combined give us randomized coordinates that will decide which of the 12 snowflakes is cropped out from the sprite sheet. We will crop them with built-in draw image method in a minute. Frame size will be used for width and height of individual snowflakes. In this case I have square shape, so I can just use size instead of separate width and height properties here. My sprite sheet is 1000 pixels wide and we have 4 columns. 1000 divided by 4 is 250 pixels. This dot angle will start at 0. I will pass it to built-in rotate method and slowly increase it over time, making falling particles rotate around. This dot spin property will get randomly assigned either minus 1 or plus 1. This will determine if the snowflakes rotate to the left or to the right. Here I will use so-called ternary operator, which is just a simple one-line if-else statement in this case. I say math.random, which code like this returns a value between 0 and 1, and I say if this math.random generates number that is more than 0 0.5, which should be roughly in 50% of the cases, set this.spin to 0 0.2, else 
set it to minus 0.2. Terminal operator is great if you learn how to use it. All it does is simple if else statement. If condition is true, question mark return this value, else colon return this other value. Update method will keep increasing vertical Y position based on speed from line 86, making our snowflakes fall down in different randomized speeds. Draw method will just draw a circle at first, representing each particle snowflake. First I have to declare context here, so ctx is equal to canvas.getContext2d. Canvas variable will need to be passed here like this, and depending on what canvas I pass it, when I call draw later, that's where the snowflakes will be drawn. You will see soon. <laughs> now I just draw a circle, so ctx begin path, ctx arc, and I pass it x, y, size, start angle and end angle. If you don't declare fill style, it will always default to black color. Particles array will hold our randomized particle objects created by Snowflake class constructor. First it will be empty. I create a for loop, let's say I want to create 20 snowflakes, so I run it 20 times and each time I call push method on particles array I just created on line 103. Push will just add whatever we pass to it at the end of the array, so I pass it new snowflake. This will trigger snowflake class constructor on line 82 and it will create one new randomized snowflake. For loop will run 20 times, fill in particles array with 20 snowflakes. I create a custom function, I call for example handle snowflakes and I pass it canvas. I call clear and I pass it the same canvas reference. We are animating, so I need entire canvas to be cleared between every animation frame, so I create a simple utility function called clear that expects canvas as an argument. Inside I declare context equals to canvas.getContext2d and now I can call clear rect method and I pass it canvas dimensions, so it clears the entire canvas area. Now when I call handle snowflakes and I pass it actual name of my canvas, it will pass that canvas ID down all the way here as an argument and that particular canvas will be cleared. After I clear the canvas, I want to update and draw all 20 snowflakes, so I cycle through particles array and for each index in the array I call update we declared on line 93 and draw from line 96. Again, draw on line 96 expects canvas as an argument, so here on line 111 I pass it canvas reference coming from line 107. Now I go up to main function that will run on the first page load and I call handle snowflakes and I pass it snow bg canvas from line 15. Perfect, it drew 20 black particles. I can change them to white here. Every time I reload the page, it randomly distributes them around canvas. To animate them, I need to be calling handle snowflakes over and over. I can do that with set interval, which takes two arguments, callback function to run and how often in milliseconds to run it. I want to run it 60 times per second and inside callback function, I put my handle snowflakes. Here we go, we have falling snow. And when they fall behind the bottom edge of canvas, I want them to reset behind the top edge, so they can fall again. That works, great! I can change fill style to any color I want on line 103, but we don't really want to draw circles, we want to draw images from a sprite sheet. So for that I will use built-in draw image method. As the first argument I reference sprite sheet image we declared here on line 83, I just pass it X and Y. It will draw entire image at these coordinates. If I also give it width and height, it will scale that image down. But I don't want to draw all 12 snowflakes like this. I want to use frame X and frame Y variables from lines 91 and 92 to crop out individual randomized snowflakes from the sprite sheet. For that, I have to add four additional arguments to draw image method. 
These four arguments will determine x, y, width and height of a rectangle I want to crop out from the original sprite sheet before the image gets placed on canvas. So source x, source y, source width and source height. Source x is this.frame x times this.frame size, so it will randomly be either 0, 250, 500 or 750. Source y will be this.frame y times this.frame size. And I pass it this.frame size for both source width and source height here. Now we get individual snowflakes and I can remove the red circles behind them. Let's make them larger by adjusting this.size on line 89. Now I will use this.angle and this.spin properties to make them rotate. I explain this in detail for complete beginners in my canvas rotation tutorial. I will link it in the video description. First I save canvas settings by calling ctx save. This is important. Then I translate what would be coordinates 0, 0, top left corner of canvas drawing area to this.x and this.y, wherever on canvas current snowflake is. Doing this will temporarily put rotation center point over this particular snowflake because we cannot rotate individual particles, we have to rotate the entire canvas drawing context to rotate anything. I have full episode on this as I just mentioned. So by calling translate and passing it this.x and this.y, I make sure this snowflake particle is center point of rotation and now I call rotate. It expects value in radians, so this dot angle, which is at first 0 degrees, times mass dot pi divided by 180. Then we draw snowflake and then I call restore, which will search for the closest canvas safe call. In our case, I created one on line 103 and it will restore all translates and rotates to that original state. So this way this rotation will only affect what we drew between this safe call and this restore call. This one individual snowflake. Since I'm translating drawing context to this.x and this.y on line 104, I need to change this.x and this.y on line 106 to 0, because otherwise it is adding up and particles are drawn off screen. Now it works, perfect. On line 105, I'm passing this.angle to canvas rotate method. Inside update I will increase this.angle plus equals this.spin from line 95, which is positive or negative number, so some snowflakes will rotate to the left, some to the right. That works, one little problem. Let me speed up this.spin on line 95 so you can see it. The snowflakes are not rotating around their center point, rather around top left corner of the cropping rectangle. I need to center them by offsetting destination x and destination y properties inside the draw image method on line 107 by half of their size. Now it works and I can return this.spin on line 95 to its original small values. This is starting to look good. In index.html I create another canvas with an ID of canvas snow foreground. In script.js I declare variable snow fg canvas and inside main function I initialize it. I create a custom function called draw snow background I declare context as usual here I want to draw a polygon representing a small hill covered with snow Move to set starting coordinates. Line 2 sets the second point in our drawing. I give it white fill and light blue stroke. On line 23, inside set interval, I call this function and I pass it snow bg canvas because that's where I want this polygon to be drawn. Let's continue drawing. Down on line 136, I call quadratic curve 2 built in method. It expects four arguments. The first two are x and y of Bezier curve control point. 
which will cause the line to curve towards it. The last two arguments are for x and y coordinates of an endpoint. So the curved line will continue our shape starting from coordinates defined in the last line 2 call. It will go from there to these end coordinates and it will curve towards control point declared here. Since handle snowflakes is clear in canvas I need to swap them like this here. So the shape we just drew in draw snow background is visible. Here we go, we have a snowy hill. Let's add one more shape using the same technique. Move 2 determines starting x and y coordinates. Line 2 is the second point in our polygon. And then curved line stretching towards coordinates at 0 and canvas width plus 20. And end point will be at 0 canvas height. When I call stroke and fill, the shape will close itself automatically and it will create a second hill. I want to draw one more that will cover the bottom part of the tree trunk partially. So one more custom function called draw snow foreground that expects canvas as an argument. Again I declare context, begin path to start drawing, move to for starting coordinates of our shape, line 2 coordinates will determine second point in the polygon. I need to declare fill style, so let's do white. And stroke style will be light blue here because we will be drawing this on a different canvas. Quadratic curve 2 arching towards these coordinates and ending at this point. Now I close the shape by calling ctx stroke and ctx fill. Up on line 26 I call draw snow foreground and I pass it snow fg canvas variable from line 6. This can be called outside set interval and drawn only once because this foreground canvas is not being constantly cleared and redrawn. Okay, this looks good. I wonder what Radu will think of it. I'm also curious what he will build next. I think it would be really nice to give it some interactive element, but I'll leave it up to him. If you want to know what he does, check out the next video in our chain coding challenge. I will link it down below. Click like please if you learned something new today. See you soon.